Hello and welcome to another episode of uh, Dance Teachers Academy. I am your host, Jose on the mic, and with me, as always, is the lovely and talented, amazing Amay. How are you doing? I'm wonderful, Jose. You look great. You? I, the Thank you. visual aspect of the show is now that you can see her in this bling that she's wearing, uh, this dress. It's uh, it's quite uh, eye capturing. Thank you so much. Um, also, we have with us, and we're uh, we're glad to have with us uh, the, the lovely Lisa, gorgeous ass. Well, I can't say Thank that. You you can say that. She, <laughs> I just she did. is she is lovely. Uh, Lisa Solomon, how are you doing, young lady? I am very well, thank you. You I'm look very happy to fabulous. be here. Why, thank you. That Cape Cod vacation, did you? Yes, yes. I think you're right. I think you're okay. right. <laughs> So, and happy birthday. Happy belated birthday. You. Oh. you were one of the first to wish me happy birthday, by the way, Yay. in advance. Thank okay. You. When uh, when did you light the candle? August 14th. 14th? Okay, so it's been a few Don't days. ask what year, Jose. No, we're well, good we with yeah. the 14th. <laughs> yeah. That's why I said lit the candle. I didn't say how many, how many uh, there were. How many? That's right. So, very 29 and holding. 29 right. and holding, yeah. You go with 30. That way it's a nice round number. You don't have to worry about it, yeah. you know. So, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but at any rate, uh, belated happy birthday. Thank uh, you so How much. was the cod, by the way? I've not been up there in several years. Uh, terrific. My in-laws live there, so we go every summer. My daughter oh, gets to that's... see the grandparents and the cousins. So. Yeah, that's, that's kind of cool. You don't have to sit there and come out too much. You go out there with something. Yeah, that's, yes, that is a nice, it really a nice is hookup. Nice. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, it's a very I might, nice. I might have to talk to you after the show. <laughs> <laughs> Instant best friends. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Some best friends. I'm like, no, we're with her. Yeah. 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 <laughs> cool. So, Lisa, I'm glad to have you on the show. And we had your best friend you on, did. Michael yes, Ray. We, did. we yes, had him did. on recently. That guy yes. is a live wire man. He was fun. Michael is all that in a bag of chips. Yes, he, <laughs> he is. He We've been friends for over 30 years. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah he is. Okay, well, then going back to your birthday, that was what? Uh, you know, you know, <laughs> yeah, we're not going back to No. La, 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 la. Preschool. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Right, right. So, and we're talking about the competition that you have coming up, Dallas Dance Classic. Yes, we started this, we have had to, this will be our third annual coming up on April 22nd, 2018. Thank you for the shameless plug. <laughs> oh, no, I like Oh, Michael already did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I asked him afterwards. He goes, oh, yes, and she asked. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we're really excited. Um, as you know, yes. being a Dallas instructor for so many years, and um, it's it's hard Dallas sometimes Dallas to have a a camaraderie type event because there are so many independent studios. But we've been very lucky um, that a lot of Dallasites, thank you so much, support us really, really well, as well as others from throughout the country. So we're hoping to grow every year. Yeah. Well, that's the idea. You know, yeah. get your name out there, get a brand, and uh, you know, next thing you know, it's like, oh, it's our 40th year of doing this uh, this thing. Well, we hope so, and and really, um, it's about inclusiveness. I mean, we really have a fun event. Um, I think we are the only Dallas event. Um, one day event that does a theme I was night. Gonna, yeah, I, I thought that was uh, mm-hmm. the, the the hook that you guys had. It wasn't. Yes. You don't have to sit there and take too much time off from work, or you're, you know, with the schedule that you have going on. Yep. You're it's in. A you're out. Event. You're done. It's fun. We do a theme night. Um, everybody costumes up and oh, gets wow, excited nice. about. It. So it really is fun. So it's it's a getaway. I think it the inst- it's very difficult. The instructors, as we know, work so hard all day dancing. Have prepared their clients for months. And sometimes that evening with the awards and everything, it can be so long. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we've made it fun. Uh, right. and what relaxed. is the theme coming up this year? We, uh, it's a surprise. Oh. <laughs> we, we have it between two and we're not sure yet. We've done disco and um, uh, 50s and 60s. So we're wanting to do something a bit different. So we'll let you know. So not Sounds roaring, good. not the roaring 20s or certainly no uh, no togas, you know, the, the whole uh, Roman She's orgy She's not thing. telling. Uh, <laughs> ah, ah, okay. See, I was trying to... I was kind trying of the to, same thing about the I was baiting. age. Right, right. I was baiting there. So, okay. All right. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. Be interesting. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, Lisa, you have... Uh, I want to talk about how we met. I want to talk. We've known each other for a good amount of time. And we share a love of costumes. We do. (laughs) And we share a perfect size for sharing costumes. (laughs) Very important. Yes, I have gotten some of my most beautiful favorite gowns from you. Yes, yes. And so I know what it's like when you see a costume you like, and you're like, I need to have that. (laughs) So, but one of the um, things that I want to brag about about you is that you had 
um, two studios, and actually one studio you had for 20 20 years. years. And, you know, for the dance business, having a dance studio or even a relationship, you have to count it like dog years, like time seven. (laughs) Very, very true. So to have a successful studio for that long of time, to have a successful business for that amount of time, that is amazing. You you, um, really... I'm really happy that you did that. Well, thank um, you. It takes a village that okay. really to do that. I mean, I was very fortunate um, to have over the years wonderful people that worked with me, um, that I trained, um, people that came from others. Like Michael, as an example, would come in and coach for me, and we would bring coaches from everywhere. I had great staff. Uh, a few, you know, over the years that I might <laughs> remain nameless, but. Other than that, I mean, really had, um, and and truthfully, and you know this as well as I do, one of the things that I feel very, very strongly have and always have is give more than you take. And in our business, yes, in our business, you know, it's it's not cheap. It's expensive hobby to have, Mm -hmm. but I've always felt like if you give more, you know, value than they're actually paying and you keep customers. And I had clients who stayed uh, gosh, I had one client that was with me for 18 years. So um, I really think that it was about customer service and okay. really giving more than you were, you take and good people. Yeah. And so what? give me an example of that, giving more in terms of a dance lesson or being a dance teacher. Well, um, well, first of all, it was everything. It was, you know, making sure to be on time, which is difficult. That seems difficult. to be a big one. Yeah, it's a difficult in this business, but making sure to be on time, making sure to have the lessons prepared so that you knew uh, what you were actually going to teach that day, and also knowing where that student was. Um, and then it was the little things. It wasn't because our business, the dance business, really isn't about the dancing dancing is the most amazing vehicle for us Mm -hmm. and people come to us and get the full advantages of that but people came to us for the benefits of dancing Mm -hmm. for building confidence for losing weight for meeting people for all of those many many things that you gain through learning to dance so the teachers wanted to make sure that they knew exactly what that student was there for and remember the little things. And if it was about exercise, making sure to make the lessons a little Mm. harder or more physically active than... Upbeat, for lack of a better word. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, and if if someone was there uh, nursing an injury but needed kind of well, then we made sure to be aware of that and yet give them the quality lesson that they needed. So everything's very individual. It's therapeutic. Mm -hmm. So how did you start in dancing? So interestingly (laughs) enough, I was uh, in my high school year and I was selling advertising at a local uh, newspaper in New Jersey, where I'm from, in Union, New Jersey. And there was a new Fred Astaire dance studio opening in my city. And I went in to sell them display ads, you know, for uh, the newspaper and of course they did they purchased their ads and everything and the owner of the studio said can you place a classified ad for me as well and I said oh sure I'll give that to the department you know just tell me what you need and I was writing and it was like you know learn to dance no experience necessary enthusiast <laughs> and I was like hmm. <laughs> Well, that sounds like a great way to put myself through school. <laughs> he was smart. Uh-huh. He was smart. smart. And that was all she wrote. I, so I, I trained part-time while I worked. And oh, then wow. I trained and went to school and all that. So that's how I started at Fred Astaire in wow. Union, New Jersey. I love asking that question and just seeing your eyes light up. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> we remember that. Yes, know? absolutely. It was um, so different because I, st- I had never done ballroom dancing um i didn't do ballet i was a a gymnast and a cheerleader okay and then you know thinking wow this is i could i could earn money while doing something really fun Mm -hmm. um with people because i'm such a people person as you know yes uh so it was very very exciting and i loved another introvert (laughs) <laughs> yeah, just like a day. <laughs> and Michael Ray. Uh, and yeah. Michael Ray. says he's not a people person. That was the thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's exactly what. Yeah, yeah, that, was, yeah. that was kind of our thing. I know. We we had a big laugh about that. Yeah. Yeah. So he goes, I don't like, I'm an myself. introvert. And I'm yeah. like, dude, you need to look that up. On the- <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> no. Yeah, he is a people person. <laughs> For sure. But people, m- people gravitate toward Michael. He wouldn't necessarily consider, and I see why he would say that, because he right. wouldn't 
kind of go Initiate into a crowd that's is what right. he says. But people gravitate toward him because of his energy and okay. his aura and yeah. his um, need to, you know, make people feel good about themselves. <laughs> yeah. So, and, I, well, I think we all in this business find that that's surely part of the um, the pride is, is that what we do does give so much. Yes, to it people. really does. Um, yeah. Can you give an example of a student like that had such a major uh, transformation because of dancing? Sure, I can. I have hundreds, but I'll give you uh, two very, very impactful things for me, and I'll tell you them both. One's a little sad, so I hope that's okay for the audience. But sure. But yeah, there we go. one um, one student uh, that he was with me probably 16, 17 years all going and he and when he came in uh, I mean he couldn't even look you in the eye I mean very very shy uh, hardly spoke a word um, but you know and 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 Rusk you know he was an electrician he had this you know uh, just very quiet but but really wanted to be there and I could tell and it so, just so happened that I took his very first lesson because one of my teachers was sick Oh, wow. So I took his lesson and then uh, I gave him one of my teachers at the time was from England and she had this accent and years later he told me I couldn't understand the thing she told me <laughs> but she was fun and it worked. Um, but he went from being that shy introverted man to being the one who would ask all the ladies to dance at the studio. Nice. He would come to the parties. He would... Uh, you know, send flowers to the teachers. I mean, you ju he just really came out of his shell and oh, just nice. really, really wonderful to see that. Yes. And then the other one that was pretty impactful was um, a, a, a female student that was with our studio for many years. And uh, she was older. She was, um, I think when she passed, she was in her late 80s. But okay. she started wow. with us probably in the 70s. Yes, dancing keeps you young. Apparently and her, so. her children... Uh, course went to the funeral and everything and her children said that they were so grateful to us all of us at the studio and you know not not a, not a single person but the teachers and the the owners and just everybody because they felt that she lived so much longer than she would have because she was happy and she was active and she was doing something fun and that they that she had asked them one of the requests was that she be buried in her dance shoes because of how oh, much joy wow and that's how many good, years of yeah. how cool joy that, that had given. So that, that, that's yeah, a tissue. Moment. Yeah. That's a, <laughs> that's a tissue moment. I mean, you know, it's I, so many years ago, but it still tugs at my heart just yes. knowing that something that you did or you were a part of that just was that joyful to somebody. I mean, and it, we know it, we hear it over and over again. Yes. Um, but that was particularly a very proud moment. Of course. Yeah. And so yeah. Um, it, it is amazing what dancing does for people our souls our hearts yes. our bodies everything yeah and so it is important it is important the the teacher um we have a, a big responsibility oh yeah i feel yeah. and so uh, I, I think it's really important to know that can you explain a challenge that you overcame as a teacher maybe as a young teacher or maybe years one a, a big challenge a big challenge um let me think because I think one of the things that newer teachers, I'll use, I'll use a generality first and then I'll go to a more personal as a, as a business Perfect. owner. Yeah. Um, I think one of the uh, challenges that newer teachers face is a lack of confidence because they are learning. They've probably had so much more experience than a new person coming in or even someone who's danced for six months as a student, uh -huh. right? But because they're new the lack of confidence i think that's the hardest thing to overcome is that even though someone may have been dancing as a student for six months if you take a lesson with them you've been instructor you've been training eight hours a day sometimes five six days a week right plus you've been working on your own dancing to accelerate your dancing more than just teaching the sure. lessons so you always have so much more experience than the person coming in but to let someone know that until they've had the trials, it's almost trial and error, until they've had those first several lessons and until they've realized that, hey, I do know what it, or someone has made a, a momentous like 
can, you know, couldn't get it and then got it. Yeah. Um, I think the, the, the confidence for newer teachers is the hardest mm -hmm. battle. I can see that. Mm, yes, sure. and to make people feel like that, uh, and it, it's different now than it used to be from the perspective of our dance client years ago was much older, the median age was much older. That's true. It has now, with Dancing with the Stars and all of the yes. newer, it has really become, the median age could be in the mid to late 20s, early 30s. Uh, now that's not to say that you won't still get your older clientele and your, even your children. Yes. But the median age has come down by 30 or 40 years. Mm -hmm. So when there was that's an older significant. client, yeah, Very when there was an older client yes. with a young teacher, the teacher felt a little inadequate because they were teaching an adult uh, so much older and they had to maybe, you know, the adult didn't see them as having much knowledge credibility and credibility Correct. because they were so young. Mm -hmm. um, well, now that I older see people that. see their doctors that are in their 20s and realizing, okay, you know, this is getting <laughs> better, um, it, it has changed. Plus yes. now, as I said, the median age has changed, so yes. it's it's different. That absolutely is a fact because, and, and I, I talk about this on the on my website, but uh, you're going to agree with me, I'm sure. Uh, I noticed huge change after Dancing with the Stars, which I love that show. And you can yes. say good and bad things about it, of course, yes. but it keeps us talking about dancing. But the major thing for female instructor is that once Emmett Smith won Dancing with the Stars, yes. it came became cool for guys to dance. Absolutely. And our business changed incredibly. Without a doubt. Not only did our business change with, I mean, it was Jerry Rice even before that that started, but when Emmett won, it did change. But what I have always said, because people have asked me, um, you know, do you like Dancing with the Stars? I have nothing bad to say about the show as a dancer. They right. think that I would be the most critical. Yeah. And I say, I am the least I critical. <laughs> I know what it took them just to get yes. on the floor. I know what it takes for, I've had students tell me year in and year out that, you know, there are little ads set on the f refrigerator for six months before they could get the confidence to walk in the door. Mm -hmm. So for me, Dancing with the Stars is amazing. Yes. And what I have felt more than anything is that it gave us a more educated consumer. Yes. Because we would get phone calls, as I know that you have, over the years, people would say, um, oh, I'm getting married next week, and we'd like to learn to dance. And <laughs> honestly... That still happens. <laughs> that does well, still it happen. does, but yeah. not as frequently. Not as frequently, yeah. They actually really... And they I would realize say, it takes some time. Yeah, and I yeah. would actually, I would talk people out of it. I would be like, you know, I really don't want to take your money, because really what I can teach you in a week is to stand there and be on time to the music. And if you're okay with that... Come on in. But yes. Otherwise, yes. really, that's not enough time. But a with grip dancing and a with the for stars, the, for the, yeah, for the foot grab. Yes. that's all you're doing at that point. Yes, and with dancing with the stars, it showed people how many hours they were putting in just for one choreographed dance. Correct. Yeah. Not even learning the basics in four or five dances. Right. Um, so it really did allow people to realize that if I want to do this, this is something that takes effort, mm -hmm. um, energy, and time commitment. I will tell you <laughs> what I always came across to before Dancing with yeah. the Stars. So I'm like, thank God for Dancing with the Stars uh -huh. because I would, uh, you know, people will ask you, they meet you, uh, what do you do for a living? <laughs> now, I, I do, I, I think men are say. wonderful, so let me say that first, but I would uh, have a conversation with a, a man of, you know, whatever age, and um, they say, oh, what do you do for a living? I'm, I'm a ballroom dancer. Oh, barroom dancer? Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah. Ballroom, <laughs> like Walt and like Fox Stripes. So now the conversation is, oh, ballroom dancer, like Dancing with the Stars. You're like, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> but for years I got... A well, bar room. Dance. Yeah, well, and the other thing is, <laughs> whatever you got that is, bar room dancer, and then you got. So you got that too. Oh yes, and then when you would tell them what you did, that you were a ballroom dancer, and they'd say, "Oh well, but what's your full time job?" Oh, wait. Yes. Yes. <laughs> they didn't yes. realize that you could have a complete livelihood. That's correct. As a dance instructor, That's right. as a ballroom dancer, teacher, competitor, choreographer, all different levels of dance. So yes. that was also a very uh, helpful. Right. And that question still comes up, actually, mm -hmm. about 
Um, oh, what what else do you, or is this all that you do? Yeah, that's yeah, okay. all yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, so I do like to talk about that mm-hmm. on, on this, uh, on our podcast, because uh, we want to let dancers know that you can make a full-time career and go in different directions. Absolutely. What, yes. Absolutely. And that was uh, something that I think over the years, too, we used to place ads that said things like enthusiastic you know, no experience necessary will train. And now they're more like change of career, professional, you know. Oh, interesting. Yes. The plug words sure. uh, changed. Yes. yes. The, the vocabulary because people. Completely. And, and this is maybe a personal thing, but I know I have spoken to people within the industry that also feel the same. But I think over the 20 year span of having the studios and even before that teaching, whenever there was a like an economic downturn, Uh, ballroom dance studios would actually do better. That's true. Because people were like, if the world's going to come to an end, I want to do something fun. Right. And so they, and it would be kind of short lived. But after 9-11, I will tell you that Mm. people were changing careers. I was even getting applicants for instructors that were a total different caliber of person than before. And that was people who were corporate professionals that actually didn't want to do that anymore. They weren't happy. They wanted to do something that they were more passionate about, something that they believed in, something Mm. that gave them more joy than what they were doing maybe to just to make money. Interesting. So that was, that's really been eye opening or was eye opening in the future year, in the like more latter years of my career yeah. as a studio owner. So uh, we talked about you being a studio owner. Mm-hmm. Um, and the reason you sold your studio. Yes. Well, very exciting. Uh, and it I'm very was positive. very exciting. <laughs> I, um, I met my husband at 40 uh-huh. and um, we became pregnant at 41. So I um, have a nine year old daughter now, which I'm very proud of Brianna Lane. Yes. And um, that was it. When I was, uh, Brianna was about to turn five when I sold the studio. And what kind of, when she was born, um, within those few years, I I did reduce my time. I would go in three days a week to the studio. But as you know, even if you're not there, when you own a business, you're still putting a lot of time in behind the scenes. And I, our hours being what they are, which could be from early morning till late night when people have the time to come. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I wanted to be a more involved, active mom and knew that I couldn't do that as a studio owner. And so I kind of started my exit strategy and wanted to be able to sell the studio when Brianna started kindergarten so I could be a, um, I don't call it a stay at home mom, I call it a runaround mom. Because any mom <laughs> who has a child that, and is at home with that child, they are never home and they never sleep you know, before, you know, two in the morning. And that is the most important career is being a mom. Yes. Yes. So I sold my studio so that I could be a stay at home and more involved mom. And I did that in the May before she started kindergarten. Wonderful. So, and yeah. So when you were, we talk about just changes in our business, right? In dance business. And I, and I remember well, I could tell some stories, but this is not about me. But I'm just, uh, what I'm referring to is just uh, how we would um, operate um, dance instructors, competitors, and, uh, you know, whatever it takes to give us energy and a boost. So it used to be coffee. Big time caffeine. Coffee, yeah. uh, Red Bull, uh, those kind of. Oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah. It, it, we, yeah, that's not good for you. That's what a lot of dance teachers did. They had a lot of coffee that keep them going for energy. Some of them a little hair of the dog. Uh, yes, definitely <laughs> hair of the dog. Uh, and everybody was different, but. No judgment. <laughs> because there was long hours. You know, you might Very go in. Especially hours. professional competitors. They would go in early in the morning to practice. Mm-hmm. Um And then they would, you know, dance lessons until 10. And then maybe they would uh, stay later to practice or go out with dancing with their... Yes, when you're... Yeah, I remember we're just the crazy days where... um, And we love dancing. So you're you're starting, like you said, you could start at 9 o'clock in the morning, practice with your professional partner. You have a meeting. You start dancing at 1 o'clock, teach till 10. And then your friend, your... You're, you know, you're like, hey, I need a little, you know, wind down time. Want to go dancing? Okay. Okay. And we went. I was like, oh my gosh, crazy. 
But um, yeah, so we went out dancing, and then so the next day it's like, give me coffee, need yes, coffee. To get so uh, and just to talk about, like I remember a competition recently where just to kind of give an idea of how much energy a dancer has to have, uh, it was a uh, one of the national competitions, and the finals of the smooth American smooth was at like one in the morning. Oh, right. And they'd been going <laughs> right. since. And wow. I just went ahead and left because I, I mean, I had, we had seen the, you know, uh, I, I wasn't staying at the hotel. I was staying, you know, it was uh, at family house, but it was a competition in LA. So I was like, you know, wave to my friend who was competing. I'm like, you did good. You made it to the finals. Talk to you tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Let me know One in the morning. So those competitors sometimes are starting with their, if they have a newcomer student. No, they're doing their thing at 6 o'clock, I see. Well, at Ohio Star Ball, I remember, and this is like the biggest, I'll right. just say one of the biggest for, yeah. you know, anyway, one of the biggest national competitions in the country. If you dance with a newcomer student, I remember on the floor at 7.20 7 20, in yeah. the morning. That means hair, makeup, ready to dance, mm -hmm. 7.20. So you might be dancing at 7.20. And at one in, the morning. one in the morning, yeah. So we used to do all these crazy things for energy and probably not good. Not I, the healthy. Well, yes. and that's the other thing, Amay, is really over the years, it's become more athletic. It's become more yes. of a sport. They yes. even changed the name to dance sport. Yes. Um, and so people are realizing that to be an athlete, you need to take care of your body. So it's no more of this, I mean, not that you can't have a cup of coffee, um, but it's not, they need proper energy, proper nutrition, yes. you know, yeah. whole foods, fruits, vegetables, carbs, protein, everything. Mm -hmm. And then they need natural energy supplements for their body. Yes. And they're realizing that in order to be able to do that, the healthier they are, the better they dance, yes. the better their bodies, and, and, and the higher can, their placing as well. Right, and you can actually then do 7.20 in the That's morning right. and 1 in the morning. So I really believe in uh, nutrition and uh, being very, very healthy as much as possible. I'm learning more and more about that. Yes. Uh, you are a big... Um, pro a proponent of that, yes. You. So one of the things when I had my daughter... There is something about, and I, I kind of, this is part of my bio too, something about being a first time mom that you start thinking about everything that you put in and on your body and your child's body and in your family. And I started to do a lot of research because for the first time in 30 years, I actually had time. <laughs> Wow, look at I that. I had time to discover I had time um, so because Brianna was in school. So, well, so I started to do a lot of research on, because I've always been a, person a healthy person into nutrition and that kind of thing or interested in it but I started to read all of this information that was like undisputed on how the chemicals that we're mm. that are in our pro everyday products mm -hmm. from our makeup to our lotion to our soaps how many chemicals they have and how those chemicals actually are causing diseases like cancers and autism and there are so many different things that are happening from these chemicals mm -hmm. and of course the food and the food that's processed and what they're processed and the chemicals that they're processed and I could go on and on and on and I don't want to scare anybody <laughs> but it is toxic the, there are if you notice she's talking them off the ledge right yeah, now yeah really <laughs> there's hope wait there's well, hope, there but is wait. hope because I'll tell you I as you know I may um just we haven't even officially launched our business but in the last you know four years I have been studying essential oils and all types of toxin-free living. Mm -hmm. um, and I have been using essential oils and supplements for our family for the last three and a half years. And I'm about to launch my company, which, which is, is called Clear Life with two E's, C-L-E-E-R-L-I-F-E, toxin-free living, um, which is to help people, to educate people about how to get rid of those toxins. And, you know, jokingly, you said no judgment, but that was one of the things that my partner and I wanted to be. We weren't that, and I don't want to offend anybody, but we, we aren't the typical crunchy granola health 
bowl, you know, person that you yeah, know, free range, eating organic. Yeah, that, that's not ninety two you know, grain I, bread. I like Esta. my I like my cup of coffee, and sure. I still haven't been able to find something that's chemical free to color my gray. And, you know, not that you have. No, any. yeah, of course, because I've colored it. Um, but. <laughs> We wanted okay. to show people that we were there. All of that stuff that yeah. you're worried about, like that Lysol, that we did it. We did it all, and we learned how not to do it. Yeah. So we can then save people all the time and energy and help them with that um, without judgment because we do know what it's like uh, to find out and not know. And when we started getting into it, there really wasn't anything out there to tell you, well, what are the, non what are the toxic products? What can I replace them with? And makeup too. And makeup, right? Yes. Yeah. And so, so you're telling me that the uh, makeup is, uh, has, is like you know you hear uh, bad and has the, some companies have the, okay which one <laughs> yeah which one and then what do I do about it right 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 well and it is becoming more mainstream thankfully um, and there are companies like Young Living uh, who does essential oils that are 100% pure uh, they actually own all their own farms. All of the, uh, they even know that there's no pesticides on the land. Um, and from the time they plant a seed till they put it in the bottle, it's pure, nothing added to it. Uh, Beauty Counter is a non-toxic cosmetic company that uh, is all about, they even, uh, they're all about having, there's 1,500 chemicals that they ban from their- 1,500? Yeah, they have a no list. There's actually 1,000 plus chemicals that are banned from any of the products, so any of the harmful chemicals. And I'm going <laughs> to state something. In Europe what? right now, there are 1,300, I believe, and I could be off by the numbers, but there are about 1,300 chemicals in, in Europe that have been banned by the UK to be in cosmetics that the US has not done. We have not had a cosmetic industry ban since 1938. So there are companies now, like Beauty Counter, that are going to Congress that are trying to change these laws mm -hmm. so that we can regulate these things so people won't have to worry 10 years from now about what's in their cosmetics because they'll be able to I didn't think they was I didn't think there was 1500 to begin with much less uh, <laughs> you know that you're banning well what would be a couple it, of ingredients that would be toxic SLS which is sodium <laughs> sodium lauryl <laughs> sulfate um, there's several what happens is the names that you read yes you can't understand because they'll use the Latin term or so it's very hard to read even labels. Oh, interesting. But some of the chemicals that are in there are like formaldehyde, mm -hmm. but it has a different name and it's not called formaldehyde. Um, so, and now let, so excuse my ignorance, yes. but why would formaldehyde be bad for you? Um, well, it's because it would what they're finding studies for it's what they would find that could cause cancers and could oh, well. cause uh, yeah. allergies and well, that makes sense different things like that there's I mean I know it's a strong chemical right. but well, I'm just like there's... let's talk about it like right and the is... same thing yeah. that they'll put in a, a tire or a might be in your cosmetics which so, you might be putting in your eye well and the skin is the largest organ that we have so believe it or not everything that you put on your skin can absorb into your bloodstream within just a few moments. Yes. And that's one of the things that they're doing studies right now as an example for, uh, I know it's, it's not, I mean, it's in the research stages, but for Alzheimer's with essential oils, because essential oils are so, so small, the molecules are so tiny, that it's one of the only things that can cross the blood-brain barrier. Hmm. And so they're okay. trying to see if that's a way to, um, you know, help Alzheimer's. Yes. Um, and of course, like I said, now there are more companies that are out there that are trying to, you know, make products that don't harm, that have, you know, no harmful chemicals. And even our foods, um, if it, the FDA doesn't regulate the word natural. That's true. And so even if something says natural, it could have up to 300 different chemicals in it that you don't know. Or if it says organic, well, that means you only have to have 5% of that product that is organic. Really? That's it? And still be called wow. organic. So much for your 57 grain bread. There you go. <laughs> I studied about that. 
different. Yeah. <laughs> but 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 there are see now there's there are places now where you can get the information. The EWG, which is the Environmental Working Group, has an app that you can put on your phone for free that you can actually check labels to see oh, okay. you know how they're rated. Um, there's also um, they I'll have, have to look the, that up. Yes, and they have the, the scare dirty myself dozen. thin. Yeah, the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. Oh, nice. The Dirty Dozen is like the 12 uh, fruits and vegetables that you should get by organic because of how, you know, pesticides. the pesticides and everything that are on them. And then the 15 that are actually generally clean, so you don't necessarily need to buy the organic oh, nice. type. Oh, there um, you go. And this is available for free for anyone. So we'll put that on the... Sure. We that like... Put things, yes. Put that things on the As screen. And when link. I say we, I mean... Jose, yeah. right? He's the technical. <laughs> it's right. so funny because someone said to Jose me, well, well I, I was actually writing a blog that we will use down the line, and it was from Dancing Queen to Clean and Green, <laughs> and how it's not such a far stretch. Okay. Because the whole process of becoming a dance instructor and educating and training, and oh, I did the same thing, yeah. and then research, and then finding the best teachers, and even if you didn't know gotcha. how to do something, but you saw the best dancer out there, you were like, you were going to get a coaching with that person. Yes. Well, I did the same thing with learning about oh, nice. toxins and chemicals. So anyway, so it really isn't such a stretch. And it's just about finding the right information. Yes. And now I am so fortunate because I spent my whole career and my livelihood completely passionate about something and doing what I loved yes. more than anything and getting earning an income from it right and I thought that was over once I sold my studios honestly yeah and I've found something that I'm equally as passionate about to go into the next stages of my life so nice and so nutrition is so important for dancers so we're talking about yes. toxic things we have this beautiful bottle on the table yes, our ninja red <laughs> and yeah. our so, ninja nitro yes yeah. so which is excellent for energy ninja it is. and you and and before I kind of but you've been using this yes. now for Almost ten days, weeks, ten days yeah, in a row. Yeah, yeah almost two weeks. Yeah. Yes, and and uh, I saved the nitro for like you know I really wanted to test it. So okay, I'm I am low in energy, and today. that's what it's for. Yeah, it's... I didn't sleep well last night. I'm going to take the nitro. I gave one to my, one of my students who's always low in energy, mm -hmm. just because <laughs> he has a long drive and he's you know mm -hmm. he has it. He doesn't of, eat the healthiest, from what I understand. Yeah, and you know he has kind of a okay. career that. He, you know, t I think takes mm -hmm. from him, mm -hmm. uh, you know, rather than enlivens us like dancing. Yes. Like this. So, yeah. Uh, I like this ninja very much. Explain it because this is a wonderful nutrition because nutrition is important for dancers yes. and we've got to feel feed every cell of our body. We are uh, athletes. We are. So we talk are to athletes. us about Ninja Red. So, Ninja Red is a an antioxidant drink. It it is, it has fruits and juices and, and essential oils. Now, I will tell you about the ninja, because a lot of people have heard of the goji berry, okay, which is a super fruit. Uh -huh. Well, the... Where is it own, located from? Well, the, uh, it's a nin, uh, province in China. Oh, okay. Right? So ninja is, the, is a province in China. So one, and it's what has what's called the wolfberry. So the wolfberry is also a super fruit. The owner of Young Living, who is a scientist, researcher, PhD. One of those? Yes. Decided that he <laughs> wanted to know, because Chinese have, ha, tend to have longevity. And yeah, he, they do. He, searched, he researched where in the world had the longest lives and longevity, and it was in this... Ningxia province of China. So he wanted to know what. He took a group of researchers oh, on his own and, and went and found that everyone there, it was the wolfberry. Mm. And there was wolfberry in everything. Okay. So he co opted with China for a and has a wolfberry farm and they harvest the wolfberry. And he that's where the Ningxia red comes from. And one, um, I do, I call it a shot, one shot of Ningxia red would have like, the equivalent of, I think it's um, 88 blueberries, or I mean, just ridiculous stats of how many antioxidants you can get in this drink. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have a lot of any 
there is nothing unnatural in it. And the sugars are, it, it's not a high very sugar low. count. It's a very low sugar count, mm -hmm. which is great for people who have diabetes and things I like that. I think it's five grams, right? Even yeah. uh, less than one shot, because I think... Uh, which is great if someone sugar. has like a yeah, diabetes. so five grams is for two ounces. So a oh. lot of people will take one ounce in the morning, and then if they need it, take another ounce. I take two ounces in the morning because I just know it's... It's good for me and I feel good. Um, and I take it every day. And I did That's a like test. like your vitamins, right? Yes, it is. Because I am horrible, and I hate to admit it, but I am horrible at taking supplements like pills. And so this, it just, I can take it every day. I enjoy it. The taste is good. And there is no energy crash. There's no high, no low. I just right. feel good. It's, it's cognitively, you know, it's good for cognitive reasons. So it, it, it's eye health, heart health. Um, cognitive behavior so it just really is an all-in-all all really great supplement to your health nice. plan and that company and then, is Young Living yes it's, it's Young Living essential oils um, and if anyone of your listeners are interested they can contact me uh, and which I'm sure you'll have my information oh, yeah. on your site because I am a <laughs> distributor for Young Living so they, uh, it is something that you, you purchase through a distributor and then you become a wholesale member and then you get your, you know, uh, discounted rate whenever nice. you purchase in, yeah. it, in the future. Uh, I actually did a little mini research because yes, I'm not right. a researcher about the nitro. Yes. Just, just cause if someone's interested in dollar amounts, yes. I went on Amazon and just, uh, compared it with another, um, you know, energy yes. type of, that I like yeah, yeah, actually. Yeah. And uh, for retail, it's really about the same. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So I was like, but I do like nitro myself because it's not that, yeah, like I'm going so, crazy. And then like you said, the crash. Yeah. yeah. So that's the beautiful a, thing sustained, about sustained, it's sustained nice energy. Energy like, oh, yeah, yeah. I, so I can day. still keep going. Well, and it's yeah. almost and like. And I can keep going. It's yes. almost like, you know, like foggy brain, you know, you start at the end of a day, you start to just kind of lose end your. End of the day. Yeah. Well, beginning or, of the, the day. day. But that's what I, nitro is I need for. Nitro, a little more. This yeah. is more for mm. energy. Like so, so ninja red is is for all these health benefits as well. And so nitro is like your natural dietary supplement for like an energy boost and or cognitive um, lift or boost. I love that resurgence. Yeah. There so, we go. So I will take this when I'm feeling like, and I'll tell you, usually around carpool pickup time. <laughs> I'm waiting in that carpool line that's around there. And I've sat down probably for the first time all day. And I'm in the car and hard to keep my eyes up because the sun's beating down on the car and you're just sitting there. I'll take my Ninja Nitro and it gets me through till the rest of the day. Yeah, because so. you know, you don't have a break after carpool pickup. Time. Oh, no, especially and my daughter, I, I joke, and, and you know, you've met her. She is like the Energizer bunny. Yes. So, yeah. 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 She keeps you going. All righty. <clears throat> this is excellent, excellent information, and I'm glad that you are sharing this with us. Because, well, thank you. I'm yeah, happy to be here. We yeah. need, uh, well, and one of the I'm so proud of you, Ame, because I love. Well, and I, you know, I have we have been friends for gosh over 20 years, all the time yes. that I've I've uh, been in the business or more uh, in Dallas, and you were always one of the first females that I met in Dallas uh, as a teacher that was you know, at another place and we just hit it off and we've been friends for a long time, but I was always, you were always inclusive with everybody. You're a wonderful teacher. Your students you. all shine. Um, and you have such a light about you that you share with everyone, not just your students, which I appreciate because the dance business can be sort of, um, Mine, mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it can be like a little cat scratching, about that. and um, yeah. and you've cat always scratchy. been great. <laughs> cat no, fighting. Yeah, yeah, cat yeah. You know, yeah, people want to kind of keep hold of their uh, students, and uh, you never made anyone feel that way. You were always great with everybody. I'm so proud that you are taking all of your expertise and now going to share it with the next generation of up-and-coming dancers as well as experienced dancers so i think the amazing dance academy is an am amazing <laughs> is a wonderful wonderful thing i'm so proud of you and people are so lucky to be getting the benefit and thank you and thank you for the benefit of your knowledge and being so here welcome. and you know thank you for all those compliments takes one to know one 
<laughs> All righty. Well, with that, we are going to thank the lovely Lisa Solomon for being here and uh, giving us uh, all this knowledge on the uh, on the health uh, benefits that you well you have to in order. You, if you are uh, running a thoroughbred, you got to feed it good. Yeah, that's uh, that's, be, uh, that's pretty right. much what it comes down to. So awesome. thank you for that information and for being here with us, uh, uh, the so lovely Ame. Thank you, Jose. All righty. Um, folks, well, that has been another episode of the Dance Teachers Academy. Remember to go out there and take your vitamins, eat well, <laughs> feed that body because it needs it. Uh, we will see you next time.